Dear friends in Christ, this is the Liturgy of the Word with Father Evaristus Egemeyo Abu. Today is Friday, 14th of June, 2024. It is Friday of the 10th week in Ordinary Time. Today's first reading continues the story of Elijah. God speaks to him in a gentle, still voice. In today's gospel passage, Jesus teaches the importance of purity in heart while reiterating the sanctity and indivisibility of marriage. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, you said that man shall not live by breath alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. As we feed on your word today, we ask that you grant us the grace to understand what we read, to believe what we understand, and the wisdom to apply the lessons we learn in our daily lives. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's first reading is taken from the first book of Kings, chapter 19, verse 9 verses 11 to 16. Our responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 27, and our gospel passage is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 to 32. First reading. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, when Elijah came to Horeb, the mountain of God, he lodged in a cave and behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went up and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the sons of Israel have forgotten your covenant, thrown down your authors, and slain your prophets with the sword. I, even I, a only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go, return on the way, on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimishu, shall anoint you shall the son of Nimishi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shephath of Ebermehola, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. O Lord, hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer me. Of you my heart has spoken. Seek his face. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face from me. Dismiss not your servant in anger. You have been my help. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. I believe I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hallelujah. 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 You will shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life. 
Alléluia, Alléluia, Alléluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and throw it away. It is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, makes her an adulteress, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus, honor to Mary and Joseph. My child, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to him who finds them, and healing to all his flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for the springs of life flow from it. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 23. In other words, the content of your mind today mirror what your life will be like tomorrow. To create anything, that thing has to first exist in your mind, which is the imagination. Our minds have creative power. We can choose what becomes of us simply by choosing our thoughts. St. Paul would say, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. In other gospel passage, in today's gospel passage, Jesus exposes the danger of giving room to immoral thoughts. What is wrong? with looking at someone lustfully. Firstly, it is wrong to look lustfully because whatever happens in your mind is equivalent to the act itself. The pleasure you derive from thinking of it is what you get also by doing it. Even though no one knows what you are thinking in your mind and you have no intention of acting on your thoughts. Jesus teaches us that with such thoughts, you are guilty of adultery. That is, you are not different from one who has done it and you will face similar consequences. Secondly, it is wrong to look at someone lustfully because by so doing, you weaken your power to resist temptation. Lust is not a harmless thought. Do you remember Susanna and the two judges? Daniel tells us that every afternoon after the people had departed, the judges would watch Susanna taking a walk in the garden. Susanna wanted to bathe in the garden one day, but the judges could not hold themselves. Lost had weakened their sense of reasoning. Can you compare these judges to Joseph who fled when Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him? The truth is that if Joseph had been lusting after her, he would not have been able to resist. You can read the story in Genesis chapter 39 verse 7 to 23. Thirdly, it is wrong to look at someone lustfully because 
it takes our mind away from God. Your mind is designed to contemplate God, not earthly things. St. Paul would say, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on things that are above, not on things on earth. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 to 2. The mind is like a magnet. It attracts whatever it focuses on. Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Matthew 5 verse 8. In today's first reading, Elijah, desiring to hear God speak, went to a cave. There was a strong wind, capable of splitting mountains. There was an earthquake. There was even a fire. But God was not in any of these. God was in a still, small voice. This teaches us that we must quieten our minds, that is, free them from destruction so that we can hear God. The battle against sin begins from the mind. Are you struggling with sexual sins? Start from the root. Cut off whatever may be feeding such thoughts. Jesus said, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and throw it away. Matthew 5.29 This also implies cutting off seemingly harmless practices which predispose us to sin, such as indecent dressing, social media, adult entertainment, and so on and so on. You may not see anything wrong with going about with a dressing that is naked, but consider the fact that some people may be weak. When you dress, let your dressing reflect a child of God. And also, let your dressing reflect, as in let, let it be that whatever you put on in your body is something that you are completely comfortable with and something that will help others to get close to God rather than for them to start having bad thoughts in their mind. People will argue, yes, but um, it, it, is, it is not what we wear that God matters. It's what is in our heart. Yeah, what is in our heart may be good, but do you also know what is in the heart of others? Do you know those who are struggling to resist the temptation of looking lustfully at you? St. Paul will say, even though it is good, uh, all things are good for God. But for the sake of that brother, for the sake of that sister, I will not do this. Once again, we come across Jesus' stance on divorce in today's gospel passage. For Jesus, divorce is adultery. Hence, as we make efforts to avoid loss, which is equivalent to adultery, we must also make efforts to avoid divorce. In this passage, Jesus warns against the abuse of marriage, which was commonplace during his time and is gradually becoming the norm today. Notwithstanding that there are marriages with serious problems, Many go into marriage today without the intention of remaining in marriage. They start dreaming of life after divorce even before taking their marital vows. Our society tilts towards the use and dump mentality. People don't want to get into marriage today because they feel that marriage is a trap. This is unfortunate. Meanwhile, some persons are going into marriage with the plan that they will eventually come out of this marriage. And that is very sad. This was the problem in the time of Jesus, which he was trying to correct, whereby a man could simply wake up one morning, get tired of his wife, pick up a quarrel, and eventually give her a certificate of divorce. Now you can go. Then this same man will go about getting another one, for the same purpose, to use and dump. 
which is very sad. We must listen to the words of Jesus. Our society needs to be reminded today that marriage in God's plan for us was meant to be a lifelong process. It's not something we use because we want to get other things. Marriage should not be a stepping stone for other things. Marry for the sake of God and for the good of your spouse. Our one who has not learned how to control himself before marriage cannot miraculously become faithful because of a two-hour wedding ceremony. Avoid lust. Cherish your spouse. Help one another. Do not think an angel is waiting for you out there. Become that angel to your spouse now. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, you spoke to Elijah in a still small voice. Speak to our consciences today and give us the power over our thoughts to keep our body pure and fitting as your temple. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.